Oh, it's 50. I just want to do like a backflip on the drop. Ooh. 56 percent of their rounds on inferno have been won over this t sign so let's take a look here and see how many they can mount against astralis who look they rock things a little bit differently on their ct but as we're getting underway astralis their map choice could it be a 2-0 it's certainly looking likely, Chad. It's certainly not looking all too favorable for Mouse Sports, but I'm never one to write them out. Bemis, Rocks, Frozen, all very capable in the individual camp, and Carrigan and Chris J, the iconic Mouse Sports names that make the entire Rostov work. So let's get into it. Let's see how this one shapes up. I certainly would love to be surprised and have a full ball tear over at Inferno, but after Dust 2, and Astralis definitely favored by both us and the sponsors gg.bet bemis duking it out in the middle it's likely he's going to get overrun here and oh quick precise shots into the first a flurry of frags in favor of mouse yeah look how proactive they are that pick up towards bananas huge as well that's gonna be the bomb now lost controlled and s tag gonna go hunting he might be able to find rops if he's very lucky the hp is low Ooh, hello check it on it oh yeah thank you very much okay three more he needs the ace lauren you want to paint us a picture you know, it's not quite the Chris J tale. With, with you know, crayons, if you want. Quite the fable. Uh, left the painting. crayons at home. Oh, not sure if I want to get paint all over my hands. But it's a tale as old as time. The one v three now. As I got that kill, obviously on Rops, it it did eventually become an ace. But it all started with a little look towards sewer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, not to be today. One day, one day we'll get we'll him. We'll do it. We'll I like uh, the movement from Esetag is always a joy to watch. Can I just point out for everybody at home why we're a little bit on the fence with Astralis on this map in recent times? Now, if you go back to uh, Cologne, they lost to NIP 16 to 13, but that was a different roster. That was Bubsky as well as Esetag. Glaive hadn't rejoined them at that point. Uh, and then on the run, they have beaten Mouseport 16 to 9 earlier in the regular season. They lost to Fnatic 16 to 9. And then just the other day versus Spirit, it was a 19 16 game where they just got across the line here within the playoffs. Now, to keep that in mind, uh, normally we're used to Australia just beating everybody down. A lot has changed. You heard from Zonic in the pregame interview saying the meta and Counter-Strike is shifting very, very quickly. And that obviously plies into some of the woes here that Astralis have been feeling. And those woes, they're not massive. Whereas you look at Mouse Sports, the majority of their rounds, as I prefaced earlier, come through the T side. Their CT side have some wobbles. So this pistol round, it's actually a fantastic step in the right direction. Right. But they have to convert. They have to. A 3-0 would be absolutely dreamy for Mouse Sports in this instance. Chris J, you can see combined with Frozen, are holding it relatively passive. This is more information-driven than it is lethality. There you go. Spots one with the jump. And on contact, if they look to push that smoke, Chris would have flashed. He's actually tucked himself back into the site for now. But this is all part of Astralis' game plan, pulling out utility, keeping CT's feet planted, not pushing for anything. Yep. And where they eventually finish, it will, does look like it's likely to be a bit of a smoke take A, but... Smoke deployed towards the library side starts the proceedings. 45 seconds. It's going to have to start being, yeah, the final commitment B is the second letter of the alphabet and the commitment. Oh, Glaive caught sadly with Util in hand. But keep in mind that the only smoke that the CTs had is now in play already. So they don't really have much more to stop them. A couple of flashes here and there, but it's going to be guns out. On the other side, they had their smokes. They have their deagles and they have a headshot. Good flash, though. Kerrigan setting Frozen into motion. Dupree trying to catch oh. the play down mid. And if he did that, maybe we'd have a bit of a round. But this looks like it's handled. And oh. Oh. tag getting a little frisky, but all good. So this should be the save coming through from Astralis going into round number three. And Mouse Sports with some woes right there of their own on the CT side are able to walk away with round number two on the board here. Picking up glaive towards top middle is actually a big frag because if he's able to play in limbo throughout the mid round and they do find penetration onto that b site the retake becomes much more difficult for that of mouse so problem solved rounds posted and pistols out astralis have upgrades for four members glaive will only be rocking the glock with flashes everybody else with a deagle or a p250 and faster up mid this time Esther tag wants to take a duel immediately might get carrigan sleeping but no the jiggle is good Followed by the wide swing and the nade. Interesting note that we got from Zonic there within the pregame interview about the overlap with Magus and Glaive and that they are working in tandem with one another. Glaive obviously one of the greatest in-game leaders to ever do it. Oh, 
Good oh. flash. That should be a death sentence signed, but Carrigan takes two. Oh, before Glaive hits a flying Glock headshot. All right. First fire, surely. Yeah, that felt ridiculous into the helmet. So they've disappeared up long, they've lost them. Heaps of time left. We still have a minute on the clock. I mean, don't forget this was essentially an eco. Couple of deagles, Glocks, the only thing that's connected so far. So there really is nothing that should be reported here. Dupree is on the sweep. Lave has a flash, which he could swing over towards Pitt if Dupree and Device want to force up through the quad side here. It's all going to come down to Glaive. I mean, it's Rops, right? We know where he likes to be. We know where that's come from, but enamored by the smoke, they turn their attention and Rops being very, very safe in play. Yeah, <clears throat> really nice stuff from Rops. You can see how cautious he was treating that. And as Chad has already highlighted, you can kind of understand as to why. Not only are they a map down, and it was a stomping on the first, but they've managed to level up their score to the exact same they managed to acquire on map one in the first three rounds of play. And that's down to Carrigan baiting it out. You got Flash tucked in on the corner enough to find the necessary double to stop things before they got out of hand. It was the burst. You were right, Chad. First Max leaping headshot. Max just absolutely nailed that. He did. The replay's there, just telling the entire story of the round. Really... Can't ask for more. The AKs are out. No AWP out for either side just yet. Residual cash being left over for Mouse Sports because of the guns they held on to. But flash through middle. Dupree tucks his head down, stays out of the line of sight. And Rops and BMAS, they might want to double dip and go again. Carrigan doesn't have another flash, but BMAS and Rops have some between them. But after that early info play, Mouse will be happy to give up that mid control just with a jiggle peek. All five in banana now for Astralis. It might be the go. Doing the Fnatic smoke, front of sight, does lock out the Coffin's position, and then boosting to peak the CT player. So it's a cool little routine they've established. Carrigan's rotated over on that smoke. He hasn't got a flashbang this time. Frozen's the only one alongside Chris, so smoke CT. An underhand smoke from Chris, hoping to avoid all this flashbang goodness. The pool's getting a little hot and spicy. And Chris looking to fill that gap he knows has been made, trying to play around his own smoke. Carrigan Arrogate. actually finding a double again. Mouse Sports finding these frags in the chaos of the take. Esatag left all alone. And with three up against him. He's got 40 seconds to do so. Bemus is the only one at the moment. It seems like Rops is pivoting back to where, given the, the silence on the server now. Frozen's low as well. If Esatag was to find him, 1v3 is on the cards. Oh, has even spotted him. That's powerful stuff. They're rotating fast. 20 seconds. Now or never. Makes it across before the cavalry can truly arrive. Good plan. To get it in, I think Frozen might get the shot. Yeah. Does at least get the bomb down. But Frozen quickly applying himself to the scenario, and that's going to be the defuse. And another one on the board for Mouseports here. Four in a row. With that plant, though, we will be able to see Astralis by. That's why I was. Uh... Piping on up, it is an important plant for Esatag to be getting selfless play. If he was able to get the round, fantastic, but the plant means that they're guaranteed to be able to get another buy round on the board here. And that was great work from Carrigan, rotating in with a double kill. He's the third man, he's the helper coming over towards this side of things, and that was frozen just last second, not being able to stop that. If they were able to do so, the money wouldn't be as flush on the Astralis. We wouldn't see the five AKs come out with the utility behind it. They might have to discuss their options or even go for a partial investment. So as we move into round number five, Everything is out for Chris both is sides. orping Banana this round. That's something to uh, monitor. He doesn't look like he's going to be taking any early initial fights. Just your typical battle for Banana. This was something you were looking forward to observing, Chad, is to see how that battle for Banana is fought. We know Astralis are more than well equipped to address it. At the moment, the half-wall smoke is being treated with the nutmeg. They walk through as it fades, calling it clear. Chris J is holding the fallback line. It's usually very good for one. Molotov is going to force Magic into the line and is frozen to execute. That is perfect. Dreamy. And a nade as well. Device vulnerable. Chris trying to bait them into the fight. Frozen still got so much utility as well. Chris has still got a smoke too. Nade. Off to hand. Smoke comes in. He knows they're now crossed. So under a little bit of pressure now. Feeling the strain. Another Ooh. good nade. Doesn't quite find as much damage as I thought. Protection, but it still yeah. does well. Supports arrived last time. Carrigan did exceedingly well at supporting over towards this. Has the nade ready for that bomb plan if it does come through? Oh, watch this damage. This nade could really pump. This does land right on the oh, toes okay. or two. Glaive chipped away. Esatag halved. Chris J does spot device cross to new box. This is a hard side to retake when there's four still established, but they're in pool and there's utility on the CTs. This tag has a smoke. 
committed towards Coffins. There goes the push flow. Carrigan oh again! God. His value is massive, but as is Devices. And now it's just Device. Already got two. Chris J goes wide. He'll die for it. But the round will be mouse ports. Another double from Carrigan on these retakes. He's stopping Astralis' B takes with a double back to back. He's got 10 frags already. We're only five rounds into the second map. That's three rounds in a row. Carrigan's had a double kill, right? So we had the two Glock kills on the arch side. Nade damage as well. I reckon his ADR is fat. Let's see the second as well. You can see someone was shooting him in the back. He just caught them on the back of the flashbang. So he's feeling himself. Just what they needed. Timeout cool. This is Stralis just trying to get their heads back in the game. I tell a lie. Carrigan's had a double kill in every round of the game so far. Five rounds in, he's had a multi-frag in every single round. Pistol round he had two. Force by he had two. Against the Glock eco. Well, the pistol upgrade eco he had two. And they've just highlighted rounds. 180 and ADR. Yeah. That's like darts. 180. Yeah. And in stark contrast, Dupree and Glaive have done Wow, there was much damage to kill a chicken every round. Aegis hasn't got a kill, but at least he's got a little bit more ADR. Uh, with that plant, the buy will be able to come out once more. It is the max loss bonus in play. For those of you new at a Counter-Strike, the loss bonus when it maxes out is $3,400. You're looking to have about 4.4 to get yourself a buy on that T side. So by planting the bomb, you get a little bit more cash in the bank balance. Oh, for Chris over towards the B side of things again. Frozen in tow and spam damage coming out early as device will be but down to half HP. Oh, loves his flash there. Unless that was intentional. If that was intentional, I'd be very surprised, but it could be. It looked cool. Well, yeah, for the half wall guy. Maybe. Kind of. Carrigan's rotating over already. This is three rounds in a row. Astralis want a condition B. Uh, information now spotted. They do lose Frozen early this time. The nade comes back in, so it's not without a massive amount of damage done. Keep in mind, Glaive is very low, but this is a quick change up and Rops might get a lot of play from this. Yeah, he's in a perfect position. Magic get back, does not expect that. Now they have to worry about Boiler continuing to sweep into the side. Beamus to contain. That's a tag, oh, neither. Multiple targets, but there's a second where that came from. Rops arrives just when he needed to. Glaive so low, he needed to finish that. Rops lives to tell the tale now, unfortunately, with 40 seconds left. He does just need to retrieve that bomb and he can go wherever he wants. Bomb picked up, Chris, spotted in library. Glaive got multiple targets and he gets overwhelmed. Mouse ports, quad kill from Rops this time. So basically what we've seen is Carrigan's killed anyone that's tried to go B and the two times they've tried to finish A to some respect, Rops has got double or more. Yeah. This time a quad kill. Nice stuff. So I, I think if you're Astralis there and you take out mini, mini Rops in holes and then Rops comes through, you, you, you're going to be a little bit scratching your head right there. And then Frozen as well. Well, there's three of these little rifles who are absolutely sick. Their aim is just... Oh, it's another level. I remember a Pro League season when Rops first came in from the FPLs of the world, and I just sat there watching him. I had Rops cam because he was the first of his kind to, to kind of be picked up and taken a risk on. And now that seems to be the door that's open for a lot of players out there. You get into round seven, it's just the pistols for Astralis. Utility, they've got a bunch of smokes. But their plan of going towards B, they're getting banana control early within the rounds. They're trying to hit that side of things, and they're not finding any success. So they might have to change up the game plan here, Astralis. Look, we, we haven't seen a brilliant CT side out of mouse ports either. This is the best I think we've seen, Lauren. 100%. Like, the thing that impressed us consistently was their resilience on the T side, yeah. I guess, and their ability to convert some dangerous rounds. But I'm... Pleasantly surprised? Yeah, and I'm thinking a third's going to be on the cards. If, if mouse ports can still deliver on the T side like we have seen... Yeah, I mean, give me, give me seven, eight, nine... I'm down to clown. Chris J is too. That just does behead the new box threat. It's more where that came from for Chris J to deal with. And the bomb still T steps. So they've got all this space, but nothing to do with it. It does pull the rotate in. Now Dupree has a choice to make. He's opted for B. Bemus rotating in as well. Don't forget, Esa Tag is still lingering around those abs. And it is only Rob. So confirming that he's fighting middle. And now he's hit the shot. Go. Surely they pivot. Surely, Esetag's deep into A. He's dropped the library smoke. Dupree's still not committing with that bomb. Is he going back to B? This is so sly. Oh, Carrigan looks for info, and he catches a deagle bullet in the side of the head. Now he goes B. Chris J's rotating off, and Astralis are playing 5D backgammon. There's only seven seconds. Is he going to make it in time to plant? Ooh. Okay. 
Jeez, that was bloody close. Yeah, that could have been 2D kaplunk. <sighs> okay, so first round on the board for Astralis. Just as we were starting to say things were looking good for Mounds, they drop a bit of a gimme right there. The Deagles and Utility was enough to get the Danes on the board. And does that open the floodgates? Because now Magus is on the board with a kill glaive as well. We can see if they can continue to pump on forward. Mouse Sports will be able to buy back, but their loss bonus has been now reset down to that 1400 If they lose the next, it's only going to be a $1,900 loss bonus, and we'll be seeing a save. At that point, the game is back in Astralis' hands. Out we go. Just Glaive this time over towards Banana. The rest of them all through Alt Middle. Smoke towards the top here, obscuring the vision. Chris trying to get on the half wall. He just jumps forward. This is a big fight. If he wins this, okay, he's going to think hmm. better of it. But he at least knows it was only one player down towards the bottom of T stairs. This is drawing out two rotations. Christian over towards A, and Carrigan's on his way as a well. A huge test for Bemis. He's only got a Deagle, and they're coming in thick and fast. He does have the distraction and the support of Rocks. Magnificent work from the Estonian. More, though, required. A smoke deployed. He can play around that nicely. Glaive, device, and S attack remaining. Numbers disadvantaging. It gets worse. Another frag. Carrigan's found it. Just S attack already looking like Mouse Sports have found their seventh. This is starting to feel like the Astralis have made us a little scared. Here we go. But... Mouse sports to me, finding form on their CT side is such a tick in the box. Really, really is. And it's take give, being given nothing. It's just a tick in a box, girl. <laughs> no? You know what I'm saying? Where was that from? Never seen I know, that. I know what Lonely you're Islands. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, I didn't connect that. Justin Timberlake. Yeah, no, no, no. It's, Andy it's Sandberg. Quite, quite a jam. What's the tag? Looking to channel a little bit of his JT here. Four to find. See if he can bring some of that sexy Counter-Strike. Not to be. Seven and one. Memes, etc. Memes, etc. <laughs> Look, the fact that we were watching an Anastasia music video today is probably saying something about us. Why did you, you rat me out? I didn't rat you out. I ratted us out. that song again? That was a really good one. The uh, left us. Yeah. Left us alone. That's Shakira. Left us alone. Shakira's. Are you not good. excited about TSM versus Fnatic, by the way, guys? It's going down right now. That's the... LCS number one seed against the LEC number two. I'm not, I'm not going to lie, and it's it's not that I, I don't appreciate other esports. It's just that I, I don't get the Pixies and Wizards. It doesn't work in my brain. No, yeah. and it's a completely different world out there. Yeah. But the fact that they let Nemesis get Evelyn. That's nuts, I mean, self-made, obviously. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Can't believe like people are picking the little Bambi, and you know, you've got the... The Ezreal doing the yeah. things with the, Here we go. the thing. And yeah. Then you've... Uh, and the Lulu the, and the... Scuttle Crab. Scuttle and, Crab. Yeah, <laughs> the, <laughs> You're on it. There's the, there's the dragon. And <laughs> which one's... Yeah, Baron. Baron and which one's Roshan? Which one? The Baron is our, is the legal... The backwards and forwards, one. but yeah. I just don't the, know which one's the dragon which. you just get for, like, gold, right? Yeah. And then you got the blue know, buff actually. and oh, the red saying, buff. Yeah, you can tell that 7-1 doesn't really... Um, create much discussion. As, as much as it's very impressive for Mouse Sports, and we've highlighted what's been working well and the highlights and the changes, the the fact is that Astralis aren't doing much well, let's work back it out. right now. Let's work it out. They've got to get the red buff here, Lauren. So uh, as they're right. going into Mouse Sports jungle, uh, we need to see if they're able to apply that pressure. The gank coming in towards top banana. Ooh, Magis with that Lee Sin kick. Can't get it done. Is he still on meta? I bet he's not. No, Lee Sin's around. Wow. Yeah, he's still kicking. That's all I knew. Very, very early game focus, though. I see. So, you know, it makes doesn't, sense. How does he scale? Doesn't as well scale. as Carrigan on doesn't those retakes towards As well as Carrigan's retakes. And Carrigan's Carrigan got is a very early double. game player, though. Yeah, well, true. I mean, but you're seeing both sides of the coin there, Chad. You saw those late game presences. He scaled incredibly well to that B presence coming in. You know. We got the right items here for the mid game, so he's able to snowball a little oh, bit. Yeah, I love this item build. He's gone AWP into Glock with the flash and the smoke as a. Can I got... try force he almost? Yeah, no, it does make sense for the offensive mm. mid game here. Unfortunately, I... not going to be too favorable as they look to hit B. It is a two on two, but Carrigan's about to lock the door. Oh, maybe not. Hang on. Hold on, hold on. He's missed his shots, frozen, hunted, and fragged. Now, what does a 2v5 becomes a 2v3? Plant just down in time. It's attack and device. Battered, bruised, fragged. Device would need to hit Carrigan now. Has done so. Escaping through the smoke. Rops on the hunt. Another through CT is B mass. One on five. Now 1v2. He clears another. Can't get away. There was a world where Rops flubbed his lines, but he knew what he had to do. He finds the trade. Device reminding us what he's capable of, though. 
Another good plant here for Australis, at least in terms of the economy. Look, the rounds on the board are not looking fantastic, but all they need to do is win one. Check out the money for Mao still. As they reinvest, as Rops was the only player to stay alive right there, financial situation is not looking amazing. Just Carrigan picking up a couple through the smoke right here. Easy as you like jumping around. Finding Glaive on the second. This was the round that almost could have been. Device doing his absolute best to get back into this one. Now, the early game plan from Astralis was clear. It was group banana and try and execute onto the B site. It was three rounds in a row. They were unable to pull off anything. And a lot of those rounds, they were stifled by Carrigan coming on in with those multi-kills. Nade damage on the plant positions. Astralis, they picked into this map. We did mention that there were a couple of woes for them so far since the addition of Essa Tag. Hasn't looked as pretty as it once did for Astralis within their history of Inferno. They opted not to go for Nuke. Nuke is the third map, a map that Mouse Sports have said publicly they're very comfortable on, a map that they've picked time and time again, and also a great map for Australia. So if we do end up on the third, which wasn't seeming likely after Dust 2, yeah. it would be a bit of a banger. I'm certainly down for the Mouse Sports revival. After a 16-3 Mouse Sports pick, Oof. I was left wanting more, and it seems that the Mouse Sports boys are delivering today. Inferno. Again, wow. more blood spread. It seems that they've got their number. Everything Astralis attempt to do is made to look foolish. Why does this feel like Dust 2, but just kind of re Oh, yes. Look at every single pick is going Mouseport's way. How many successful beginnings have Astralis had? Yeah, I guess we can compare that stat to what we saw over there within uh, map number one, where Astralis were getting all the openings. I don't think it's as one-sided, but it certainly feels like the conclusions are certainly as one-sided. At eight to one, of course, a couple of the Astralis players finding it hard to get the frags on the board. Now down to just two. Denied on the plan, denied on the round. Carrigan again being there. It is just as bad, Lauren. We are now, uh, what, 9-1 into yep. play. I I'm pretty sure the opening kill statistics at this point right now are looking something along the lines of, uh, well, nine to one. Mouse sports are absolutely dominating in that regard. Device is the only player to find an opening for the team. Magus and Glaive have been involved in three opening duels each, uh, currently sitting at zero and three each. So that between the two of them, they've given up six opening frags. On the other side of things, working well for that of uh, Mouse sports. You've got Carrigan on a bunch. You've got Rops with a couple as well. Frozen and Chris J finding openings. So things are going uh, swimmingly, I would Certainly say. Certainly swimmingly. Device ahead of all that util banana. He might be were looking for more on Chris J. But previously, Chris has had no issues dealing with this angle. He plays CT very well. Nade landing on Device's back pocket. That's the only round they've lost has been to these pistols with the light upgrade. Oh, yeah. True. See if they <laughs> manage to strike twice. Hello. Forcing Chris out of the line. A flash for Frozen's fight. Makes sense. And he does do well to find the first. Already chunked down to 55, though. Vulnerable to a shoulder shot. Spray is good. Flash is two. It's a massacre. There's only one brought back for Astralis. It's Dupree. And that deep smoke's not going to save you, mate. They're trying to drop his, but he's going to get pushed as well. And that's Mouse Sports continuing Ooh where they left off. Ladies and gentlemen, a series presents itself. Do not forget, Mouse Sports have shattered the dreams of a strong Astralis many times in Pro League. Season 10, 11, now 12. Will there really be another third map debacle? Will it be Nuke again? It's certainly starting to become a reality or at least a possibility. Harrigan has seven multi-kills Dude, he's already. on it. Yeah, he's having a bit of a mad one here. Still what over 100 ADR. Uh, yeah, let me have a little bit of a I swear something one. like ridiculous, like one six kill on kills. the T side so or on, something. On Dust 2, BMS had 10, Chris J had 9, and then 6 for Carrigan and Rops, and Frozen only had 5. Oh, restart. Bit of typing. Restart, yeah. So, yeah, we'll be getting this one back underway after a little bit of a technical issue, but don't fear. I'm fearing, Chad. We'll get it sorted, Lauren. Don't worry about that. Uh, look, obviously, the HLTV.org scorebot is a little bit behind, but like at the point of 8 1, Carrigan had 100% KAST, which is kill assist Jeez. trade, which is basically being wow. involved in, in every, every kill within the round, right? So that's fantastic work there from the in game leader. And one of the things that I'm looking at with the way that mouse bots are approaching a lot of these situations is they're bloodlusting. You know, as soon as they know that they have the number advantage and they can just maul one of these Astralis players or the stragglers, they're going for it and they're willing to take these fights. I think that's key here. Just how, I don't want to say cocky, yeah. just how keen mouse sports are to take these jewels and, and really take it to Astralis. So back under where we go, round number 12, scoreline 10 to one in favor of mouse back towards this banana play. This is what Astralis tried within the early stages and mouse sports always had a man cheated over or they always found the early utility damage and a kill. Well, Carrigan's here again. Does have support with him, of course, frozen there. 
Chris J's on the way back around. The AWP just kind of floating between us, made it towards CT here. But look how aggressive these T's might be posturing. It looks like they want to push forward, take some space. Dupree's done just that. Frozen's still alive, though. Crossfire with Kerrigan, but they're taken down. Oh, that's an extra frag. Chris J catching device from the grave. Excuse me, he's still kicking. Dupree's so pushed up. Esetag getting this plant. They're, they are relying on a Dupree multi-kill. And that now is he's it. there. They don't. I think they Surely. saw his foot. Surely not. They're not acting like they do. And he finds the frag. Beamer's gone. Esetag swings into the orb, though he has to just stand and fight, and that's easy peasy. Lemons are squeezed, and another round on the board. Mouse Sports making a bit of a speed run of Inferno here in our second map. This is ludicrous now. This is absurd. That's absurd with what, no. Who got the opening kill in that round? Was it Mouse? It must have been with that crossfire they had. So now yeah, I think... Yeah, it was traded up, back. So we're up to, to 10... Oh, 11 and 1 in terms of opening jewels. So still, Astralis only have one opening kill so far within this map. We're about to see it just it's here, so character. there you go. So yeah, 11 and 1 in opening jewels. They are finding all the success on their CT side. And we've been painting the picture that Mouseport's CT side has been, I, I guess, it, the half that lets them down. Because it had been. It, like, it definitely you know, had. Stats pointed out. That, that's how it was. And the thing is that it was. It felt very strange because when we went on the T side, it looked phenomenal. And yeah. you think, wow, they clearly understand how to get themselves in here. They just hadn't applied it yet. But keep in mind, pro everything's been a work in progress, I feel, with Mouse Sports. You know, every time they play, they get something new going. Every time they step forward into the server, another layer gets revealed and we get to see more of these guys. And the new identity switch with that AWP on Chris J more often than not, Seems to be looking quite good, at least now. I mean, Dust 2 was... was. I'm going to push that aside. We'll forget this, about it. <laughs> for now. This looks much better, though. And if they can beat Astralis in the same way that they just had their asses handed to them on Dust 2, then moving into Nuke, we, we clean game. the slate. It becomes a best yeah. of one. And both teams very proficient what on the, the map of Nuke. I, I just, every time I look at the top, it just feels... Weird, right? Peculiar. Yeah, I mean, especially considering the, the stomping that was handed to Mouse Sports over on map one, but... It's not over. Certainly not yet. Astralis would have to really lock the Mouse Sports T side down from the get go. So we will have a very quick glimpse as to how competitive this second map will be once we return from our break. We're not there yet, of course. A couple more rounds to keep it competitive. But if I, if this is 14 1 at the break, we can start talking about Nuke as soon as we get back from that break. Don't fear. Don't worry. Astralis, a necessary final few rounds here on their attack. All that Nuke prep I did is going to come in handy. Fantastic so. Nuke. <laughs> I really thought this was going to be over in two, and, you know, more for me. Didn't really expect Carrion to be the, you know. More nade damage. His ADR is staying chonky. He's going to finish this half at 140 ADR if he's not careful. <laughs> it's so dangerous. 17 to 8. He's, he does this now and then. It's the Carrion super special. Oh, hello. Here we go. Oh, oh, give it to me. Glaive's there as well. Oh, oh my oh, God. Carrigan, the body shot beast. He does it again. Two bodies drop. Chris about to be tested in a very big way. He has got the AWP. He is now AWP. And Carrigan is already... Out. Look at him! <laughs> oh, He's hungry. He's already man. catching him! Oh, the nades. Carrigan wants more! I'm back. Oh, this is perfect. It delays it. Chris can maybe have a second swing. Oh, Carrigan oh. turns up. The big daddy is on the server today. His device now. A 1v4. No worries. Carrigan. He's done this. And they're going to let him have it. There it is. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, Carrigan just locks down another round against Astralis. He is making quite a strong case for a third map here. 12 to 1, 21 for Carrigan. Look at this. He's just got such a good read on Astralis. He knows what they're doing. He understands the level, the, the, the approach that they're taking to the extent where he can exploit it. And he's getting it now another multi-kill round. He's done it on B and he does it again on A. Keeps pulling off. Performances like this. How many kills does he have? 21, Lauren. I think the sum total of Astralis is like. Like, even Magisk have one. Yeah. So he is. Big value man. Hell. Big value man. Oh, now, yeah. Bmas ha is having a quiet game, but he also isn't really needed to Not do needed. much. Like, he's just kind of around. And that's okay. And it's going to be a fast up mid. Oh, they're I'm going back Carrigan. to Carrigan. No, 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 no. I wouldn't do that. Bmas does go down. 
There's Ropso to pick up those pieces, swings out. There's a good bit of damage here. Kerrigan in the fire and the flames doesn't oh. care. Ugh. He's growling. I feel like he's just growling all the time. Bloodlust. His eyes. He's just furious. Yeah. Foaming at the mouth. I, I love this because of what Zonic said in the pregame yeah. interview about, you know, losing yep. to Carrigan and, and when that goes on down. So the history that we did put in the grave a little bit earlier today was the fact that with this Astralis roster, Carrigan was one of the core members alongside of Device, Dupree, obviously Zipex of old. And, uh, well, the roster has changed and chopped a lot since then and since his departure they've uh, achieved an awful lot, the Danes. Household names in the country, I'm sure that must sting for Kagan being also from Denmark. But as we get into the last round of play, what is stinging even more is a 13 to one scoreline. 13 to one. I thought Dust 2 was a beat down. This is ridiculous. Yeah, and it's gonna get worse for Dupree. He's gone down 17 to four. Now sports, I've got Inferno under lock and key, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. More of it, keeping that ADR nice and stops. Not going to be missing any Carrigan heroics in the final round of the first half. Bemis, though, does do well to find the fifth full flashed. Ooh, I thought that was fun to say. I'll say that again at some point, I think. I like this. We still have Rops quite nearby as well. Bemis, the case. Device going to get tickled quite low there. 24 HP. <laughs> Oh, eight HPs, banking on Glaive to bail him out, but this plays in Beamass, if anything. They do stay alive, but barely. Beamass gets swept aside as Device again. Last one standing, but this time a 1v2, but eight HP. And Chris confirms it. It's a 14 to one half, ladies and gentlemen. Astralis would have to do the impossible to end this in two. We'll be back to see Mal Sport secure. Map two of the series here in the lower bracket final.
The first map was 16 to 3. And ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you now, it was a 14 to 1 half here in the second. Not what you may have expected, though. Astralis smashing through Mouseport's pick. And here on us, Inferno, the pick of the Great Danes. They've fallen absolutely silent. Nothing but a peak with Deagles and Kevlar is all that they've got to present after the first half on the team side. Time for defense time to see if we're going to have any more of Inferno, or will it be Nuke to determine whether or not Mouse Sports can break the Astralis Pro League run again? History, history rather, has pointed all towards Mouse Sports. Regardless of form and results clashing with Astralis in the Pro Leagues, historically it's favored Mouse. Didn't look like that would be the case today, but it seems that the strong case has been made here in map two. Pansy and Sponge alongside with myself, Machine. We've got ourselves a pistol round, a very important one. You can see that not only by the positioning of the CT, stagged up and passive, but also by Mouse Sports and their unwillingness to give anything away early. Let's take a note here of these P250s, one for Rops, one for Frozen. will be deadly when we get into the sight hits, leveling up the playing fields against the USPs. And then we have two smokes and two flashes on the more supportive elements of this team, Chris J and Carrigan, the veterans. Over towards Banana is where they posh. The device about to go for some info. Needs to be careful for Rops's position and the timing might just be on the side here of Rops because it's going to be called clear. He can sneak into the back line and if device starts running... Eesh. There we go. A precise James Bond-like first blood draw. Oh, another one. Yeah, they're all in the right place for this. And they did so much damage. Carrigan, a shadow of his former self. Glaive nading down Chris, and this will be the spotless Astralis pistol round. Maybe they just wanted to do it in hard mode, looking for the 15 0 in order to take this one. Casual. Yeah. Why in regulation. not? Regulation. Uh, as said, I think the one thing we do need to remind ourselves is how poignant that T side was for Mouse Sports. It almost, almost got the win against Narvi. Yeah. At point. Uh, look. There is a world, not one that I know if I live in right now, where Astralis can bring this all the way back. Now, if they do, that would be one of the, the greatest you, comebacks I've seen in a very, very long time. Have you ever cast one of those games? Uh, I know they happen. I no, have cast one. I, I don't think I've casted one, no. Okay, so welcome, Chad. This will be your this will be first. first. I, it's Thanks. very unlikely, everybody. Don't, you know. Chad. Uh, Go get your popcorn and stuff now for Nuke. Do? I'm already looking at the screen. I know you're doing your, your homework for Nuke, but Magisk is also doing his frag work with his MP9. Devices there on the FAMAS as well. They're not losing anything here. So at least the first three conversion, which was, of course, the same way Mouseport started off their campaign. Or pa Campagna? Campagna, yeah. Oh, is that like Champagna? It is, yeah. yeah. And sometimes it's really nice to have some Champagna to wash down the Bolognese. I like oh, to I get my. Uh, I like to get my uh, my uh, glasses for my Campagna from uh, Tajé. Oh yes, Tajé. is that near Primani? Yes. Mm. We're idiots. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just... This just in. We are idiots. All of the press. <laughs> no one had any idea. <laughs> hey. No, we had your fools. Uh, yeah. All right. Well. 18 rounds of play. This is the 18th, and it will only be the Desert Eagle for Mr. Anderson. Mr. Robs, there he Mr. is. Mr. Anderson. I feel like, you know, there's going to be a break point soon where I'm not allowed to reference Matrix, assuming people have seen it. Like, it used to be a cult. Are we already there? It's, it's, it's We're here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, people don't know I Matrix. I might watch the reference. Matrix tonight. Yeah, I actually, oh. I am. I, I kind of want to watch the second one again, even though it was terrible, because I recently read about how terrible oh, really? it was on the production side of things. Like, everyone hated uh, each other. How do they have two kills with only pistols? Yeah, well, we'll check in with this now, because Dupree's the one that's trying to pick up the pieces. They are flooding into the pit side, and with Bemis going down, we don't have to get too concerned, but frozen onto Dupree. Uh. They desperately want that plant. Esatag denying it, but it is three frags. There is a world where Chris J can at least try and get that plant. Esatag's controlling it. Okay, that's the plan he wanted. He faked it. That's ambitious. Glaive hunts him down, and it will be an Astralis conversion in the end. But it was the bonus, quote-unquote bonus, against the pistols there. It was only a single Desert Eagle. So with $700 invested, uh, to make that close to 1K with the P250. Still, nice work in the end from Astralis, at least just to make sure things... Yeah, uh, devices feeling the frustrations there. 
Just making that sure the mouse mat and the mouse arm is warm. It's wild just how quick map number one went in their favor and how different it's looked over here. Very That was stark only one contrast. opening kill for Astralis on their T side within that first half. And I, I guess we want to put the shoe on the other foot like we did in map number one. Mouse spots were proactive enough to find 14 opening frags on the CT side. And we just have to reflect on Carrigan's impact as well. So this is why it feels like a matter of time. Just the pace at which a snowbally team like Mouse Sports can play, eventually you feel like they're going to crack this one. We only are into round number four here within map number two. But this is the aggressive banana play that I was highlighting. I didn't even think we'd get a chance to talk about it, but we're finally making it to a gun round. And this is the different look. They're not used to this. They're not used to having a battle against this because Big and Na'Vi, they gave Mousebots Banana for free. So this is different. This is a, a change up where Mousebots are going to have to deal with this and see how they're going to evolve going into the second half. The game I was recalling uh, was from 2015. Ah. It was ESL Pro League Season 2. So we've come away since then. Yeah. That was NIP against Fnatic on Dust 2. I think it was like a 14-1 to Fnatic and so yikes. all the way back. Um, so it would, it would, it, as I said, this doesn't, it wouldn't happen very often. Nice work from Dupree. Lovely. Very, very nice tracking that so perfectly. Majus has remained somewhat undiscovered. Will show his hand now. They might have put together, there is that double stack towards Pit, but it's just frozen. Dealt with well in the end. Nice work with Glaive, Majus and Dupree all together. <sighs> It is a mountain, isn't it, right now, when you just look at the amount of rounds they need to post. But I suppose if we see Mousebots get stumped on two or three gun rounds where they can't get banana control for free in the same way they did in those, aff uh, those aforementioned matches, mm. then we can start going, okay, well, maybe we're on for something here. Well, do we wait for his double digits, right? I'm going to get excited now. I'm going to pretend it's happening. Round, round after round. By round! Astralis. Step by step, the mountain! Oh. Yeah, we, we've, all, we've all had to do it. <laughs> Give them in, an inch, they take a mile. Clichés. Pouring out now. But Tech Nine's a great deal of utility. This can be forged into something quite deadly. So I want to see what Mouse Boards do with this. It is a, a correct lean so far from Australia. So four players here in the right place to greet them. Definitely a set piece. Smoke's indicative of that. Nades potentially over towards Pit if they can get top mid control, but they need to get that first. Smoke towards the outside. Dupree's going to say, no, thank you. We won't be having any of your business here today. Shot on out of A. And the pistols will fall. Two quick kills for Dupree. Make that a third. And now it's just frozen, lying in wait behind the mid smokes. He's going to get mopped up any moment. Bomb in hand. A minute on the clock. Round six on the board for Astralis. Round by round. <laughs> shush, your <mother. laughs> Shushy, shush. Frozen is doing his best just to try and grab himself a weapon. I thought it'd be cool if he naded that M4 into his grasp, not to be. And so, Astralis continuing. He was 14 to 1 on the half, so for anyone that just joined us and is wondering what the hell's going on, this is just a, a matter of time as it's been framed, and it obviously should be framed that way. Though it is Astralis' map pick, there's certainly grounds for a stunning CT side, but it would be down to misplays from that of Mouse. Even a broken clock is right twice a day. Just has to strike twice. And they'll be taking us to nuke. Here we go. Ooh, Spurt of aggression. Brave at this scoreline. And that nade damage, obviously unconfirmed. Glaive's got a fair bit back, but Dupree's got so much space. Carrigan's about to dip back around, though. That's big. It does go Dupree's way, and he's going to have to continue forward. He can't really stop, and he doesn't. Chris J in the smoke still, going to get the tag. He gets the frag. Device, that's an unfortunate miss. He's lucky to get alive, though. Get away. 17 points of health to him. Now Sports definitely can play this mid-round out. Chris J creeping up. Trying to find a bit of space for himself. So much left to play with. You look at the mollies, the smokes, the flashes. They can still forge something. And Device missing a, a bit of a sitter. I felt as though that's something that he'd do every day of the week. And you need now Magus to be the one to handle all those threats in there, mostly coming through the apartments. Rops has made it down for now, aware that Magus is towards Pit, but the support's here. Big frag from Frozen keeps things going in the mouse sports direction. As a tag, dropping a smoke for the retake, close the gap a little easier. Frozen to plant, Rops to play close to that smoke. 
Oh, the Molly's perfect. Frozen will take a lick of damage, but it isn't too much. Just shaves the 9 off the 69. Lonely tonight. 6 HP for Glaive. They have to do something. Cutting noise. Throwing in another incendiary to try and force the fight favorably. But Frozen burning. Nearly thawed. It is so low. S attack has a good chance here, but he's got to close the gap soon. That bomb needs to be defused. A chance for Rops. He squandered it. Both just duking it out. It's looking for the headshot. Frozen falls one-on-one. No on one. S attack can't do it, and Rops pulls the 15th out of the hat. Just by the skin of their teeth on the A hit. I can't believe that Glaive even got a kill there. He was on low HP that entire time. Not taking any damage on up. Rops missing a couple of shots before he closes on out. Look how this started, though. Yeah, it was around that it looked like Astralis had done enough in. So grinding it out, Mouse Sports, fantastic stuff to pull this back from the number deficit. And that kill from Frozen over towards Pit on Magisk was what allowed that plant to come on through, giving them full sight access. Guns will come back out for Astralis here. This is the last round of regulation if they aren't able to put one on the board. s -tag will have the MP9. M4s for the other three. Back up to Banana we go. Kerrigan's burning. Oh, it doesn't even matter. Look at this. One HP remaining oh. takes down Glaive. B bomb sites open. Carrigan's come to play today. Dust to a memory of the past. Mouse spot just one round away from taking us to nuke. It's the one everyone should have their eyes on. Yeah, if you had a friend that's ready for some counter strike, you probably even playing a matchmaking game. You can see it's about to wrap up. Let him know. This one should be the best of the bunch. Nuke on the cards is it's just Magus, Device and Dupree left to four. Device. Not ready to quit just yet. Rops caught on the lurking apps, but the bomb is pivoting back towards the B site. You can see a very pushed up Carrigan with one HP. He's not going to be able to provide too much more. Do breach us as the smoke fades, tucking in towards second. He is the lone B defender at this point. Magisk, excuse me, Dupree now actually finding the first. Maybe Astralis can dig their way out of this hole once more was in the hands of Device and Dupree, but it swings to Magus because they try and run up mid. That's a quick greeting. Frozen to fall. Nice little smoke. Flash to follow. He's trying to buy time. That's exactly what he needs for the support to get the sprees in. Tries to make it count. Gets the tag, but goes down for it. It's possible. It's doable, a 2v2. This is an intense counter. Bomb down. Chris J's done that. Device with only an AWP. It's not the dream retake weapon. Dupree, what can you do? Walking up middle. Oh, and Chris J beheads Device. It looks like we're heading to Nuke. Confirmed by the Dutchman. Dupree can't do a thing. 16 to 6. Speed running through the lower bracket, it seems. Mouseports take Astralis' map pick. We'll see you on Nuke.